Right, that's, I'll get the cached image up. Uh, the screen will sync eventually when it resets the screen size. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so we've got the desktop up for the live environment, live USB environment. Let's go through the same rigmarole of setting up the keyboard, ensure that we haven't got any problems typing in the wrong symbols or anything accidentally due to issues with keyboard languages, keyboard layouts. Set that up. Get the prompt up. browser right, this mouse is also fast okay Right, so first thing we're going to do is to go to BLFS 12.0 and straight to the wireless section. Oops. So I've done configuring the kernel. Um, actually, let's go back. I don't need to go there. Uh, the tool we need, there, there are two other tools here, actually, IW and wireless tools. Uh, they're probably best for troubleshooting more than anything else. So you might need to install them if you are having problems to get, get some more information out. But uh, generally, you should be okay with installing this if everything goes well. Um, yeah, configuring the Linux kernel for wireless, we've done that, haven't we? Let's go back there because there's this link about firmware which we'll be needing to get to. So yeah, this WPA supplicant is the bit of software that runs um, and manages access to the access point and sending the password and so on and so on. So Again, already you can see we've got a little bit more complexity with Wi-Fi and that we need a bit of software installed to enable it to work. We then need a bit of um, configuration, which um, is, well, there's a little bit of extra configuration, arguably. Um, and then, of course, we need the password to access the access point if it's uh, WPA um, encrypted, which... Uh, ideally it should be rather than an open connection. Um, but of course before we do that we need to re-enter the truth environment. So let's go to LFS 12.0 book. And go to preparing virtual kernel file systems. So I need to List my devices. I need to mount the LFS root, which is that device. So export LFS equals MNT LFS. Make that directory. Mount the root device on that directory. Now I can mount these virtual file systems. Right, 
looks like I've got too many lines there. And rerun this F command, make sure that's all set up correctly, and then shoot into the environment. So I'll just set make flags equals J4. Okay, we're in there, so that's good. Go back to WPA supplicant. And it's got recommended desktop file utils. Well, um, if you did need, or if you were planning to do BLFS, obviously if you need a wireless connection, you're going to have to install this and then come back and reinstall it once you've got all these other recommendations or optional packages installed um, but this is unnecessary because we haven't got a desktop file system or desktop system um, now libnl it says recommended and when i tried it without it it didn't work but i did notice that there's um, a c flag setting here to include a libnl library so that could be why it failed so if for some reason you didn't want to install libnl then i would assume you'd have to leave that option off um, but the fact that it's in part of the configuration and isn't recommended, I mean, to be quite honest, arguably it should be required um, because that's what the instructions are saying that is a requirement. But there you go, it's a bit of an arguable, arguable thing. So first of all, we really do need to go and install libnl to get this to work as the instructions say in the book. So what we're going to do is go to sources. I'm going to make a separate directory for all the BLFS packages. Not that one though. Change into it. Now we've got no way of fetching packages. So I'm going to have to do this in another tab outside of the true environment. And I'm going to have to change into the LFS sources, BLFS directory to fetch these files so that they magically appear when we return to the true environment. So I'll copy that link, paste it in to fetch it. Um, if you're into documentation, um, I think actually it's API documentation. Yes, it is. So I won't bother with that. So if we go back to this link now. We can now do a list. There is that libnl file we've just uh, downloaded. So let's extract it, change into the directory, and follow the instructions, which are quite simple. So I'm just going to copy this all as one command. It's the, the two commands are joined together with the and and the ampersand ampersand. So if the configure fails, the make won't run. Uh, but you can see it's worked because it's actually running the make now and compiling. That's all done. No test suite. Let's install it. And that's complete. There's no further commands to do, so I'll just tidy that up. And that's libnl done. So we can go back to WPA supplicant and fetch this again in the other tab. That's fetched back to the true environment. There it is there. Extract it. And we can proceed with the installation. So first thing is this configuration file. Um, if you want to use WPA supplicant with Network Manager, well, Network Manager, I believe, is something that's used by a 
some higher up packages yet as part of GNOME by the looks of it. Uh, you can see it's quite involved. So um, at the moment, uh, I wouldn't do this because I just want to get Linux from scratch working with the Wi Fi. Obviously, if you're going to be building more in BLFS, then you'd probably want to come back to WPA supplicant, supplicant and um, rebuild it as well, um, taking into account whether or not you do want Network Manager. So I won't do that configuration because uh, we haven't got Dbus, not at the moment. So we'll just do this to build it. And again, some more commands there if you're building Qt5 or, or the alternate, which we're not because it's just a, still just a basic Linux from scratch installation. That's compiled, so we just install it with this command. All this set commands are all bolted together. That's all okay. We don't need to do this because we didn't build that bit. We didn't build that bit either. We don't need to restart the dbus because we haven't got one and we haven't got a desktop, so we don't need to do that. So configuration. Um, now, something that I can't quite get my head around with this, this command here is used to store the password for the access point um, or router that the um, you want to connect to. So what you've got to do is replace SSID with the um, name of the access point and the secret password um, that is used to access that access point. But the fact that it says secret password is a bit confusing. Let me just tidy this up because I'll show you why I'm a bit confused by it. Um, if I put that command in, so it's as if I want my SSD to, SSID to be SSID and my secret password to be secret password. Um, why isn't this working? Uh, paste. If I look at that file, uh, let's change into that directory, make things a bit simpler. It actually puts a comment in with the password in plain text when it's encrypted it. So, um, yeah, I'm a bit confused by that. And if you look at the file itself, it's readable by the, by every single person who could use this system. So anybody could find out what the password is for this SSID. Um, if I do that again, to make it a bit more clearer perhaps. So if the access point is called, uh, for example, my router, uh, and the password is my secret password, So you can see, yeah, it's put the password in as a comment right next to the encrypted. So, yeah, I can't understand this. If it's supposed to be a secret password, then it encrypts it. But by default, it's read this file is readable by anybody. Um, it's kind of a bit weird. It's like it's making it secret, then it's leading it white wide open for everybody to read. So what I'd recommend if you are concerned about that is to do a Chmod um, 600 on that file so that it's only readable by root. Um, although bearing in mind this may affect users accessing this file. I'm not sure how WPA supplicant works, but if you do get problems as a, an ordinary user, then you might want to change that back. Um, in which case it's not that secret if you do have to uh, keep it like that. Another thing is obviously to remove that comment so that if anybody does actually get to read this file, if you, if you do have to leave that as a um, 644 accessible file. So if I put that back, so it is readable by everybody else. 
at least if somebody does read it, they can't actually see what the password is. They've only got access to the uh, encrypted form, which again is still not secure in itself because they could still gain access once they've got that encrypted key. So I'm a little bit confused about how that works and what's the right way or wrong way of doing things. But um, there you go, just something to be be um, aware of. So having said that, I'm going to just pause the video while I set up my own um, access to my own access point. Okay, so what I've done is I've copied on um, my own WPA supplicant Wi-Fi configuration file to get access to my own Wi-Fi uh, with my own secrets in there. Um, and that's all should need to do as far as that configuration is concerned. Um, to get this to boot or to work at each boot, we need to install a boot script. So we need to fetch that as well. So let's copy that link and fetch it. So let's go back to the sources, BLFS, extract the BLFS boot scripts, change into them and install the startup script. So there's two files being installed, no, a directory and one, yeah, one script for the looks of it. Then we need to create an IF config file similar to that. Go to the sysconfig again. So you can see we've already got one for the, for the uh, Ethernet. And you'll see this new one for the Wi-Fi is quite similar. There's just a couple of extra. Uh, no, in fact, there's probably just one extra um, configuration. In fact, sorry, it's not this one because I'm not using DHCP. Uh, that hasn't been installed yet. It's this one here because we're using static addressing. So I'll copy that in. Now I'm going to edit that file. Just put in some of the words, uh, some of the IP addresses. So the iFace WLAN0, that should tie up with the name at the end of this file here. And no, sorry, no, it shouldn't. That should tie up with the interface name, sorry. So that's the interface name from, uh, for example, IP A. So that name should be the same as, uh, no, not this one, uh, uh, IF config then, IF config minus A. Oh, that's interesting. Why has that changed? Okay, when I was testing this out, that actually did say WLAN 0. Okay, I'll we'll have to bear that in mind. But basically that interface is the actual interface name in the same way as the iFace for the Ethernet. Is the name of the Ethernet device. Uh, you can see there, ENO1. Okay, well, I'll... I'll leave it as WLAN 0. If, if things aren't working right, then maybe I will have to change that. I don't know why it's appeared differently. Uh, yes, I do. It's probably because I'm in the live environment. So that's something to bear in mind, perhaps. When we booted into Linux from scratch the first time, the name of this device was WLAN 0. Um, obviously, something in the Linux from scratch environment is creating like a generic name. Whereas in the Gen 2 environment, it's actually using the um, UDEV derived name. So this is like a, again, a hierarchy of the topology of the connection. Uh, also, not the connection of the location on the bus of the device, uh, which is why it looks such a complicated name. So I will leave 
that name because that's what it was in Linux from scratch. Um, so all I need to do is just change the IP details, which uh, would uh, have to match any other system you've got connected to your network. So if you're not sure what these should be, then just look at another computer. If it's using DHCP, uh, try and use an IP address that's not too close to the IP address of that, that one because DHCP will have a, a range of IP addresses it can use. And if you happen to pick one as a fixed IP address that another computer might pick up automatically through DHCP, then you're going to get problems. So try and use one that's a little bit further away. So for example, my allocations all start at 70, I think. So I tend to use anything you know above that out of the way. Um, for the Ethernet, I use 101. For this one, I'm going to use 102, which should be sufficiently far away. So I just need to change that to zero to match the rest of the network. And that should be all the configuration that's needed. And it says to bring up the wireless with that uh, command there. Well, I'm not going to do that because I'm in a true environment. There's already um, other systems running. Uh, in fact, the light is on on the USB dongle, so that means that Gen 2's enabled it. Um, that one there. Yeah, you can see there the two APs I've got access to. So. I think all I need to do now is to come out of the truth and um, test this to see if it works. Uh, oh, let's stay in and you mount Monsar MNT LFS. Uh, strange, I wonder why that's. Again, that's something else that wasn't happening when I was... Oh, yes, that's why. Because I've got it open here. Let's get rid of that tab. Try that again. That's better. So now I'll just do a reboot. I'll remove the live USB to make sure we don't boot from that. Believe me, that's the grub menu. Press enter to boot it. And the screen should sync in a moment. Okay, so this gateway already set up skipping. So it's probably because I'm enabled the Ethernet and the Wi Fi. So let's have a look at, well, let's log in first. Let's have a look at IPA. And it says that the well, the Ethernet is up as you expect, but the wireless is down. And as you can see, the name is WLAN. It isn't that horrible number we had before, so at least that's okay. So that could be down because it's conflicting with the Ethernet. And IF config. It's just an IF config on its own. Yeah, that doesn't look like it's connected either. Uh, oh, internet address. Oh, I've not configured it correctly, the looks of it. Looks like I've put the wrong. Oh, oh yes, I've done this wrong. That's. The right way around. So the IP is 102, the gateway is uh, 01. So let's save that. So if I do IF up uh, uh, Wi Fi 0. So I've got already done it. Okay, so I've got to put it down first, even though it wasn't running. Now let's bring it up. Okay, that's better. I've not got any 
messages about the gateway already running. So if I now do IPA, uh, sorry, IPA, uh, that looks better. So I've actually got the Ethernet is up. Um, all right, okay, so the WLAN is still down, but at least the details look a bit more correct, yeah. It looks like it's still trying to use gateway. What I'm going to do, because I made that mistake, I'm going to actually reboot again. Um, and just work from fresh. Now I've got the right details in. Okay, so it says the gateway is already set up for the WLAN interface. That's probably because we've got the Ethernet working. That gets started first. Let's do IPA. So it says it's down. So it could be because the Ethernet's working. So what I need to do is to bring down the supplicant program and also I'm going to do the well let's just check that the ethernet is still working so I'm going to do ping 1121680.1 yeah that's working okay so I'm going to bring down the ethernet and now I'm going to bring up the wi-fi to see if that works right so there's no warnings about the gateway <clears throat> being in use. Let's have a look. So it still says down. So let's just try pinging. This is probably not going to work because it says down. No, it's not. So the next thing we need to do is to look at the message and see what information we've got here. So first of all, I can see straight away it says direct firmware load regulatory DB failed. And this is something you need so that the um, Wi-Fi device can use the correct frequencies for the location you're in. So that's quite important to get running. So there's that firmware we need to install. And then you can see it's trying to load firmware RTL. So this is worth taking note of because we need to configure this. RTL Wi-Fi forward slash RTL 8192 CUFW underscore TMSC failed with error 2. And then it looks like it's tried to load a second lot, which it says alternative firmware. So it looks like because it couldn't, fail the, uh, couldn't find this TMSC bin firmware, it's tried an alternative name it knows about. And obviously that's failed as well. So we've got this selected firmware is not available. So this could be why this particular Wi-Fi is not working because the firmware needs to be loaded um, before it works. So despite what I said earlier, it has got a little light on which indicates to me the kernel has got it working, but it can't actually do anything without the firmware to work properly. So it does mean we need to reboot into the USB environment again to identify this firmware and fetch it and install it into the system to enable everything on the Wi-Fi to get it working. So once again, it's important to take a note of, well, both of these. I mean, you probably only need the top one, but in case that doesn't work, we can't find it. Take a note of the second one and importantly, the directory that it's in as well, because that's that's important as well. Also, the regulatory DB, um, we need to fetch that as well. So once again, we'll reboot into the live USB.